have you looked at like the synergies or conflicts of having everything together? Uh, I mean, do you see like them adding together or in, in any way conflicting? Yeah, so that that was part of the logic behind the formulation and on our evidence page, we talk a little bit about that. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that the ingredients would actually uh, work synergistically with each other, that there was uh, nothing that would potentially counteract each other, right? And there, there's actually um, a number of studies that have been published more recently over the last five years or so, and, and there's a increasing uh, volume of these studies where they look at the combinatorial effects of different longevity promoting drugs. And they show that uh, when you have just one of them, for example, that you might have a benefit of you know 5% increased lifespan. And when you have another one, also in individual, maybe it's 6%. And the question is, well, what if you combine the two of those together? And uh, these studies are finding that the the combination is greater than uh, than the sum or what you would expect, right? So there are these synergistic effects that these ingredients can have when taken together. Um, the trial where they combined metformin, uh, DHEA, and growth hormone together and, and showed that the three of them together had a, a bigger impact on the epigenome and uh, biological age than any of them on their own. And, and they had a logic behind that. So we follow a similar um, uh, perspective in the sense of the the synergistic impacts. And then the question ultimately comes down to, well, what what does experimentation show? And uh, I mentioned this, the senescent study that we ran. We also ran a DNA damage study at i Therapeutics where they study specifically uh, sorry, i -Core Life Sciences, where they study specifically longevity uh, drugs for pharma and biotech. And they took us on as a customer as small as, as we were at the time. Um, and uh, they warned us before the study that they didn't expect us to see any DNA protective effects from Novoscore because they had studied the individual ingredients in Novoscore before. And there was no real benefit from them. They've done about $7 million worth of studies. Uh, on, on different pharmaceutical drugs and natural compounds for DNA protective effects. Well, after a couple months went by and they ran the study, they sent us an email excited and we, we got on a phone call with them. They told us they had called their CEO to tell them about the results because they were so excited. We, uh, at different dosages, uh, the best dosage reduced DNA damage to human cells by 77%. This is the cells were irradiated and we compared to a placebo or it was in, in vitro, so not technically a placebo, but a control uh, where there is no Novo score. And uh, then we, uh, we, we compared it to non irradiated cells. And then we did the Novo score at different dosages. And the best case was a 77% reduction in damage from the irradiation. Uh, and on average, across the dosages, it was a 68% reduction in DNA damage. That's unheard of. Like that is just such an extremely high um, result that it's it, 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 extremely exciting, uh, enough for them to call their CEO. So it, it was counterintuitive to them because of how much research they had done before. But then that's to my point that we're discussing about synergistic effects. That's an example of how different ingredients combined can be much more powerful than when you have uh, one single ingredient in isolation. I don't suppose there's any follow-up research going on to try and figure out why that, what the mechanism was. So uh, the, the, the quick answer is we are doing additional studies. Um, specifically to that, we have a finite budget as, as a uh, yeah. relatively young startup. And so what we emphasize most is uh, finding proof points that this is actually beneficial in humans. And so this, the scientific process is very reductionistic to your point where you oftentimes will start with one single ingredient and then maybe add a second ingredient after you've done millions of dollars worth of studies. Uh, and, and then you never really get to a third or fourth ingredient because it's so expensive. Uh, and so we're taking the reverse approach where we're actually uh, uh, putting together the ideal formulation based on scientific research and then doing research on how that performs. And we're finding really great outcomes from that because people don't have time to wait, right? Like I, I don't want to wait until I'm 70 before I'm taking Novos core. I want to take something now that's having the positive impact and then we can work our way backwards to figure out exactly why. So 
maybe when we have additional funding and, and grow as a company, we can, we can uh, untangle that ball of yarn. Right. Yeah, no, that absolutely makes sense. I mean, it's the outcome you're looking for, and it's like the mechanism is secondary. Uh, so I think sticking with kind of uh, trials or case studies at the moment, I think it, you did a small case study on um, skin. Yes. Could you talk about so, that? Yes, sure. So it, it was a small case study when we were getting started, um, and we provided uh, four subjects in this, their 60s, two male, two female, with Novos Core and Boost. We had them take it for six months, and we uh, wanted to measure uh, impacts on skin health because we have some ingredients. Uh, speaking earlier about short-term benefits, we have ingredients that can improve skin health like hyaluronic acid, glycine, calcium, alpha ketoglutarate, glucosamine sulfate, all of those can have impacts on your skin and collagen and so on. And so our theory was we would have a positive impact. And so we, we uh, used a scientific device called an indentometer, which NASA uses on astronauts. It's a legitimate device that we had to rent uh, because it's so expensive, but we, um, we, we tested uh, both cheeks on each of the subjects. So we got eight sample sets and we, we ran it about a dozen times on each cheek before and after. And then uh, we took the average of those results. And we found that at a minimum, we improved uh, skin firmness and elasticity as measured by this device by 12%. Uh, on average, it was increased by 22%. And the max, I believe, was 40% improvement in, in skin firmness and elasticity. Now, anecdotally, we also get a lot of feedback from customers, uh, favorable feedback related to skin health. And people typically say that their, their complexion just looks healthier, that it, their skin looks a little bit more even or just like a little bit more plump. It, it's... I, I'm not going to claim that this is like a miracle cure for wrinkles and you're suddenly going to look younger again, like so many, you know, cosmetic companies uh, claim, right? But in terms of like, um, just making you look healthier, like a little like this subtle shift where people notice when they see you, but they don't know exactly what it is that's different. That's the type of effect that that a lot of our customers report after using Novos core app for about uh, four to eight weeks. Interesting. Are you kind of collecting that data in a way that you're, are you collecting it as data that you can uh, look at in more detail or is it it's just anecdotal that data that comes in? So, so there's a few ways we're collecting this data. One is we, we do run customer surveys uh, after a new customer comes on board after just over a month or so. We, we collect feedback on positives and negatives, any, if there are any negatives, it's very rare, but occasionally someone, for example, doesn't like the flavor. So we need to know about that. Uh, but, uh, uh, so we're getting actual quantitative data in that way. We also have something on our website called face age, which is a, a, a fun tool, uh, where it's, it's, uh, an AI trained on millions of people where it's able to tell you how old your face looks. And it looks at a number of dimensions from like, uh, the amount of adipose tissue in your skin to your bone structure to your skin health and evenness and so on. And it gives you a um, an eye age and a face age as well as other skin health marker scores like pore size and skin, uni skin uniformity and so on. Uh, and so that's additional data that we have where we can see among our customers who has the, uh, whose score has improved uh, or to what degree has their score improved over time. Now, it's not exactly like a scientific study because lighting conditions might be different and someone might be well hydrated on one day and not on the other, but it's still interesting data for us. And then we're also running studies that I can't get into at, at this point, but we are running studies where we'll, we'll have additional data, uh, more objective than, than what I just mentioned. Interesting. Yeah.